On average, UK house prices have risen by a massive 10% over the last 12 months, making it the biggest jump in years. What do you feel when you walk past a house like this? Envy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going first? Meaning more of us than ever before are choosing to build rather than buy our ideal home. How hard can it be? Cut to a scene of the house falling down. <laughs> They're going to have to rip the guts out of this house. I'm actually <sighs> sweating. These builds can be the chance of a lifetime. The whole thing is being designed around your wheelie bin. As crazy as it may sound, yes. <laughs> there are risks. Fingers crossed the bank give us the money to finish the second floor. Why is the ridge not sitting on the oak beam? It's been cut wrong. But get it right. And the home of your dreams, that is a world away from the rundown house it once was, could be right on your doorstep. Oh, this is brilliant. That's what I've always wanted, a family home. And now you've got some. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's going to happen? Oh. They're happy tears, aren't they? Because mm. it's so fabulous. This year, residential planning permissions in the UK rose by a huge 8%. Proving that more of us than ever are choosing to take the future shape of our homes into our own hands. I'm with two families who, unable to afford to buy their dream homes, have decided to try and create them out of far lesser houses. I can't wait to see how they get on. In Birmingham, Paul and Andrea have a big dream for a bigger home. If we had another baby, where would we put it? If we haven't got a exactly. room? But they're starting the build without knowing if they will ever have the money to finish it, which is a huge gamble. It's so risky, in fact, that very few homeowners attempt it. So how much do you have? 25. Do you that's, know that's yeah. quite a tall order? But you've got to have the dream. So reaching for the stars. We did start a cash flow, which is a good word for it, because cash was flowing out at quite a nice rate. But first, I'm off to Northamptonshire to meet IT manager Joe, wife Sarah, and their children, baby Eleanor and three-year-old Alexander. What's the green one? That's Triceratops. Joe was desperate to move back to his childhood village of Little Addington, to be closer to his dad and to give his children the same joyous upbringing that he had. The estate agent said it's in a little village no one really knows about. As soon as he mentioned the name, I was like, yeah, I'm buying it. Didn't even have to see it because I knew which house it was. Straight away I said, yeah, that's it, that's the one for us. And for a price of 200,000, the one for them was this 60s bungalow, which could be considered lacking the rustic charm of its neighbours. It wasn't our dream house as it was. But we knew no matter what the cost, we would be able to make it our dream house for the future. Anything we do to the house has to fit in with the village as well as enhance it. The historic village of Little Addington is home to only 330 residents. And at the centre point is this stunning Grade 1 listed 14th century church. The parish council has only approved 15 new houses in the last 10 years, so unsurprisingly, Joe and Sarah's project has got tongues wagging. It probably wouldn't be ideal if all of a sudden we went from having an OK looking house to a house that is pretty garish and out of keeping with everything else. So, you know, that, that would most certainly not be the ideal. With Joe being born and bred here, Little Addington was always going to be high up on his list of places to live. The only problem for Joe and Sarah is that house prices here are too high to be able to afford their dream home. But if they had the money, it's this stylish yet sympathetic barn conversion they'd buy. The amount of windows and the light that it can let in the property is a big thing for us. Are you quite big fans of a more contemporary look? Yeah. 
I like this house because there is an upstairs room which could quite easily become a home cinema room or a games room. In our <laughs> previous house, it, the spare room became a play room and I'm kind of learning to accept that this is going to happen yeah. in the new property as well. <laughs> so you want your own playroom? Yeah, basically. With boys' toys? Yeah. <laughs> now, a house like this would be worth probably about £800,000 and your house is worth about 200000 so you'd need yep. to find well over half a million pounds to, yep. to mm. be able to buy something like this. How much have you got? 75. So you're a long way short. Joe and Sarah would need to pay £800,000 for their perfect pad, as their bungalow is worth only a quarter of that. So they'd need to find a further £600,000 to afford their ideal home. But they're way off that with savings of 75 grand. It's a modest budget, particularly for a couple dreaming of creating cutting-edge cool. But it's not just their funds that I'm a bit worried about. This bungalow is always going to be important as a site because it's right next to the church. And so the whole village will really care what ends up happening with it. Set on a steep slope means the property comes with a small storage room on a lower ground floor. On the level above are the kitchen, lounge, three bedrooms and bathroom, all arranged in a rather awkward layout. At the moment you've got the sitting room and then the dining room beyond. We just don't think it works with the kitchen not connected to it. It's lots of walking to, from, round. I know you've got an old serving hatch. I'm a really big serving hatch fan. I just think they're terribly practical mm. serving hatches. Mm. We've used it so much, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. You're thinking you might keep that? Mm. Yes, definitely. Great, you can join my serving hatch campaign. <laughs> <laughs> To bring their drab home bang up to date, the couple have come up with a very adventurous set of designs. The basement will be extended and turned into a man cave for technophile Joe. On the next floor, the kitchen will be opened up, but the real showstopper of this build will be the huge lounge come dining room with a double height, fully glazed balcony and a glazed external stairwell connecting this floor with the basement and garden below. Up in the eaves, two new bedrooms and a family bathroom will complete the transformation. I think they're well thought out plans, but I do have one controversial suggestion. The one thing that screams out to me at the moment is that I'm just, I'm not sure about this space here. as a family home, and I just wonder whether you wouldn't be better off moving the kitchen down so that it accesses straight onto the garden. So you have a kitchen dining space downstairs, I'm afraid, in your den. But that could be an option. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the idea of moving the man cave out of the basement is an easy sell for Sarah, but I'm not so sure about Joe. Is it a bit of a waste having a space <laughs> exclusively for you? Hopefully, oh, I suppose one hope is as the kids grow up, they will join me in the room. And, <laughs> and that's me with the, and interacting with them. But yeah, you're probably right. I totally understand the couple's vision for an ultra modern home designed to drink in the views. But they're really doing it right in the middle of the village? There's going to be a lot of changes coming up for this bungalow, and it's open here for all eyes to see. That probably will mean that there's going to be tricky times ahead. Leaving the pals to perfect their plans, I'm off to Birmingham, where teacher Andrea and self-employed Paul bought their semi three years ago for £225,000. But now, after the arrival of baby Florence, they're feeling the squeeze. The space is just too small. We're just kind of on top of each other in the morning. The other day I had Flo here and she was turning the knobs on the cooker, putting the gas on, nearly gas to stink you, Flo. The couple want another baby, but with Paul running his carpet cleaning company from the only spare room, they know their home must grow before the family can. If we had another baby, where would we put it? If we haven't got a exactly. room. Exactly. Exactly. So it's a must. Yeah. Paul and Andrea's 1900s home is in the Birmingham suburb of Bourneville, an estate built by the owners of Cadbury's for their factory workers at the start of the 20th century. The estate has lots of open green space, and much of it is now a conservation area. 
Is this where you were brought up? Yeah, both of us. So yeah. we met at school, so we've lived yeah. really local. Born and bred. Our parents live really close by, so it's handy to have them close to us. You're here to stay, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Unfortunately for Paul and Andrea, Bourneville's period charm does come at a price. But if money was no object, they'd buy this large four-bedroom property nearby. It's set over four storeys, boasts four bedrooms, all with en suites, a study and a large garden. Perfect for the growing family. Well, we like the traditional features, the nice tall ceilings, the old floorboards. The kitchen leading out onto the garden. Just all the, the traditional quirky little bits in there, really. Yeah. So those are all the things you'd really like in yeah. the perfect world. Yeah. And the downside, the house like this would be worth about 475,000. Mm. And your house is worth about 225. Mm. So you'd need to find another 250,000. Yeah. And do you have 250,000? No. No. That's no. a definite no. Mm. <laughs> so how much do you have? 25. Do you that's, know that's yeah. quite a tall order? Yeah, yeah. we do. So that's reaching right. for the stars. You've got to have the dream. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we can make that dream reality. Yeah, hopefully. The dream four-bedroom property is on the market with a price tag of £475,000. With their house costing less than half of that at two hundred twenty-five grand, they would need a further £250,000 to buy their ideal home. Paul and Andrea are hoping to build it instead, with a budget of just 25 grand. So the couple want to turn their small three-bed house into a spacious five-bedroom home. They're asking an awful lot of bang for not much buck. Still, at least they're only limited by the size of the budget. Now, it's a corner plot, and they're always quite a good buy because you end up getting a wedge-shaped piece of garden, so it's a bit bigger than all the others, generally. They might have got lucky bagging a home that comes with plenty of space outside, but inside, it's a different story. And this is the kitchen you're managing to cope with at the moment? Yes. Not enough cupboard space. Not big enough to cope with one child, let alone another. The other brood, you're yeah, planning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there is a plan for quite a big family here, is yeah, there? Yeah, well, let's not go too far. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> <laughs> to create a spacious house to fill with kids, the couple are planning a big build with a little budget. Downstairs, they want to keep the layout of the existing reception rooms as it is. But down the side and across the back, the garage and kitchen will make way for a large open plan kitchen diner, plus a utility and loo. Upstairs, the plan is to add a new master bedroom with ensuite in the extension. They're sensible designs, but the couple are taking a huge risk by embarking on a build without enough money to complete it, meaning they'll have to refinance when their home is still essentially a building site. I guess the important thing here, you don't have a very big budget, do you? No. no. Oh. We're planning to go to the bank halfway through mm. the build and try and get some more money, but our initial budget is 25000 until yeah. we get more money. OK, so you're planning on getting the shell of it up and then... Yeah, we're going to build until we've got the roof on. And if we've got any money left, we'll get the kitchen installed, get it watertight, go back to the bank, okay. tell them there's been a structural improvement, hopefully. Fingers crossed, they'll say, yeah, it's worth a, this amount, so you can borrow a bit more. Gosh, so it's all on the knife edge, but you might end yeah. up with a, with a shell and nothing else. But I guess the important thing is to try and make sure the value is as high as possible yeah. for when they come mm. round and re-value it. Yeah. Andrea and Paul are about to embark on an emotional roller coaster. If they manage to get this finished enough to refinance, then they're going to end up with a beautiful home. If they don't, they're going to end up living in an unsightly building site. Almost 200,000 households applied for planning permission last year, proving that many of us are choosing to create rather than buy our perfect property. And these two households are no exception. And with two families taking the bold move to build big family homes. 
but they're doing it under the shadow of uncertainty and watchful eyes. In sleepy little Addington, home to no less than 10 listed buildings, the peace and quiet is being shattered. With the rumble of heavy duty machinery. It's the start of Joe and Sarah's controversial project to transform their 1960s bungalow into an ultra modern three story home, right in the heart of this traditional village where Joe was born. They're cracking on. Workmen have already demolished a section at the back and are now digging out the foundations for the new extension. You really feel the vibrations, can't you, is it? They're gradually chewing away at the bits of the house are starting to get a bit worrying, um, but they hopefully know what they're doing. It's not just the current residents that might be disturbed by the excavation. Joe and Sarah's house is only metres away from the ancient village church and its graveyard. Obviously, being a close proximity to a churchyard, we assume the boundaries of the churchyard were greater at one point. We have been warned that there could be a potential for uh, yeah, other occupants to be on our property. The lower ground floor of their bungalow contains a storeroom. Joe has decided to dig this out and extend further under the house to create a cinema room and massive man cave. However, Builder Paul hits a major stumbling block. We need to excavate part of the basement area to increase the living space. Unfortunately, the footings have only been built at 100 millimetres, which means, of course, as we excavate to get the required head height, it means that we actually lose the foundations entirely and are down to the earth. So we have nothing substantial to build from. It is disappointing to find something so early on with the shallowness of the foundation it's kind of limiting what we can do. So unless they can come up with some imaginative way of getting around these foundation issues, it's gonna limit what we can do in the underground space. If the builder can't find a way to reinforce the old house, it's looking like Joe's designs for a large open plan basement will have to shrink. In Birmingham, Paul and Andrea's project is also well underway. The couple are taking a massive gamble. They're starting their ambitious two-storey extension with an astonishing budget of just £25,000. Which is nowhere near enough money to complete the build. My heart drops every time I hear a big van driving up the road now, worried whether it's going to be another dent in my bank account. It's Paul's first time project managing. To add to the pressure, he also runs his carpet cleaning company from home. But his biggest juggling act is his budget. At the beginning, we did start a cash flow, which is a good word for it, because cash was flowing out at quite a nice rate. After a while, I started uh, updating the cash flow and looking at uh, the bank accounts, losing money. It'll take more than a plumber to fix Paul's leaky cash flow problem. The couple's plan is to build the extension and hope the bank agree to lend them the rest of the money needed to fit out the interior. There's always that thought in the back of your mind that a spanner could be thrown in the works and you're left living in a building site for another year or even longer. In Little Addington, Joe and Sarah are now two months into their eight-month project. It's going to be one hell of a space. It is, isn't it? They are going ahead and extending Joe's man cave further under the house, which means extra structural work and a huge £8,000 bite out of their budget. Still, at least they dug up nothing unexpected in the garden. I'm hoping that now the couple's foundations are sorted and the walls are going up, their budget won't suffer any more knocks. Famous last words. Looks like there's been an accident with the garage. It's not great. But the garage was definitely not going to be demolished in the plans. What happened to the front of the garage? Um, a couple of days ago, one of the delivery drivers accidentally uh, reversed into the garage. So uh, we're oh. now having to rebuild the garage as well. It's the last thing Joe and Sarah need, particularly with such an ambitious modern design. So it's going up, 
So hopefully the structural work supporting the house is going to plan. There's a little bit of jiggery pokery that needs to go on with your foundations. What happened there? Um, because we decided to try and come into this space, we've had to be very careful what we've dug out and then how we've then retained enough strength next to the original foundations to keep the rest of the house from falling down, basically. You were undermining the original foundations. Basically, and you needed yeah. to kind of tread cautiously there mm. yep. to stop the house collapsing. Yeah. <laughs> Not being so good. <laughs> So this is actually a bit bigger, isn't it, than you had on the plans originally? We realised once we started the digging that we could come into this space. So it's kind of a, an extension of what the original plans were. I've always thought Joe's games room should stay upstairs so the kitchen diner can go downstairs. But now it looks like the area down here will be bigger. Perhaps I can push a few of IT manager Joe's buttons. Your plan at the moment for this room is to have it as a man cave, which would look a bit like this. That's yeah. your vision, isn't it? It moment? is, yes. <laughs> so what I think it might be worth considering is actually bringing the kitchen downstairs, because this is the room you're going to end up living in most of the time. Using it as a kitchen would be much yeah. better. I, th I think... It's, a, it's quite a vast space, isn't it? I can see how the kitchen does work, yeah. The big news for gadget lover Joe is there's also room for his beloved cinema down here, behind the wall on the left. What would be really effective with your man cave is to have a secret door, which you'd see here. It just means that, that that's one constant wall, but within the wall is, is a hidden door, which takes you through into your... That's, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah, I can, so, yeah, I can see that working. There's a lot more things in it, whereas my idea was just very much a large room with not much in. This, this seems to use it a hell of a lot better. I personally think it's a no-brainer, but it's crucial they keep on making smart decisions because to create a striking home on a shrinking budget, every penny is going to count. Back in Birmingham, despite their lack of funds, I want to show Paul and Andrea that they don't need to compromise when fitting out their kitchen. How? By going X-Display. If you're on a limited budget, it's more important than ever to make a decision about a kitchen so that you can hunt around and make sure you bag a bargain. The average price of a new kitchen is between eight and £10,000, but there are easy ways to get a better deal with old show kitchens. Most showrooms will consider selling X display, so it's worth asking around, even at exhibitions or trade fairs. There are now even companies that specifically cater to sourcing and installing used kitchens. Most former showroom kitchens come complete with working appliances, which is another massive saving on a tight budget. The key with X Display in a way is that you're getting all the appliances and the oven and the tap and the units are in a way chucked in with it. So it's a much more affordable way to go about getting a kitchen. OK. And so say if we brought this, and that's not going to fit in our kitchen. We can just add more of the same units. Yes. This would be £13,000 if you bought this kitchen, but as an ex-display kitchen, it's £5,800. What do you think about this? I like it. It's really nice. And the amount that you get included is really good. We feel like we can't really get a kitchen yet until we know that we're getting the money from the bank. So it's useful to come here and see that you can get stuff cheaper. Yeah. At least it, that gives us like an opportunity to think, well, we could afford that. Gives us hope. It's now two months into the build and it's a big and busy day for first-time project manager Paul. The costly steel supports are being craned into place, ready for the roof to be tiled. We've had to scratch around to find the last, last bit, bit of money, big steel and burrow. These beams alone cost nearly a fifth of the entire 25 grand budget. And with Paul running both his business and the build, he's putting his heart and soul into keeping this project afloat. It is stressful at times, but you just get your head down and, and crack on and get on with it, really. And in the middle of it all comes exciting family news for Paul and Andrea. We're actually having another baby now. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, great. So when's it to you? In five months. 
And that is our kind of deadline now. We do need to make sure that it's done before the new baby arrives. So every week is really going to count. It will. One. Yeah, it will. Paul and Andrea have staked everything on this. They've turned their family, home and Paul's business upside down. With a new baby on the way, there's even more riding on the successful completion of this project. I just hope they can persuade the bank to give them the money they need to finish it. I'm with two young families who are embarking on major extensions of their homes. Unfortunately, a cloud of uncertainty hangs over both the builds. In the Birmingham suburb of Bourneville, Paul and Andrea's project has now entered its third month. First-time project manager Paul is trying to finish the shell of his build before the 25 grand loan runs out. Yeah, I mean, I must be mad because it is stressful. It does start to take its toll. There's been a few moments when, I, if I could, I handed it all over to a builder and said, I'm going on holiday, have it done for me when I come back. In Little Addington, Northamptonshire, Joe and Sarah are halfway through the eight-month transformation of their 60s bungalow into a cutting-edge three-storey home. It's been several months of hard work living in the house and seeing what we have now is very good. So it's just building on that positive aspect um, rather than looking at the negative of how far we've still got to go. Despite early setbacks, they're well and truly out of the ground. In fact, they're up to the eaves. And with the house now reaching its full height, it's starting to draw the attention of the locals. Little Addington's quite a tight-knit community. Um, you know, everyone knows everyone. I guess there's a, a fair amount of intrigue as to what the end result's going to be. We have lots of people kind of walk up and down and they automatically look at what we're doing, but we are kind of expecting there to be some objections. I was rather surprised that this fellow was able to get planning permission for a building like that, which is ultra-modern, and I, personally I think it's a blot on the landscape. In such a traditional village, many are concerned with how the finished home will look. None more so than the councillors who approved the plans. People walk up and down this lane frequently and so they're very concerned that nothing happens that spoils the, the look of the place. Because it's very close to the church and obviously the church is the kind of focus of the village, along with the pub, I have to say. The real crunch time for this project will be when all the modern glazing has been added. Only then will the locals be able to decide if they love the house or loathe it. It's a hive of activity in Little Addington, but 75 miles away, the silence is deafening. Quite quiet on site, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's it nice is. and peaceful. Well, due to the fact there's no more building going on at this moment in time. We've run out of money now. Pretty much, yeah. So you need to refinance, yeah. Yeah. and that hasn't happened. Not yet. Not as yet. So shut yeah. down the site yeah. until you've hopefully yeah. borrowed a bit more money. Yeah. Are you nervous that it might not come through? Yeah, there is. Maybe a little there's bit. always that at the back of your mind, but we're, we're positive. I guess you just have to wait and see. It's coming up in a few weeks' time. Then you get the surveyor around to revalue yeah. it. And, I mean, it's, it's looking pretty good, the site, but I think yeah. a bit more of a tidy up would yeah. help. The amount of the second mortgage will only be decided after the survey. The extra funds are vital to complete the build. So Paul and Andrea need to up the value of the property as much as possible. And good space for parking can increase the price by 8%. Well, the driver's taken a bit of a beating yeah. during the bill. Flory started rolling up and yeah. cracking all the slabs. So now we realise that we've got to do something about it. There are various options for driveways. Um, you've got shingle. The advantage with that is it's the cheapest. So that's £25 a square metre, but it tends to spread. In terms of maintenance, it's a bit of a pain. The next option would be to have paving like this. Yeah. So this would be about £60 a square metre that's laid. It can be really smart, but it can be quite urban for this 
quite a green environment. Yeah. The other option is to have a resin bonded gravel and it gives the same look as gravel, but you don't have bits of gravel floating yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Now that does come in at 90 pounds a square meter. In terms of durability and maintenance, it's probably the easiest option. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what I had in mind initially. Now you've, you've showed us that, it's definitely something to consider, isn't because it? Because I prefer the look of that than the tiles. Yeah. But that wouldn't really work for us, so I suppose that is yeah. a good solution. No, I like it. Hopefully a new driveway and a tidy out will really show this property off in its best possible light. Because after this final bit of work, the fate of this project depends on the valuation. Paul and Andrea have the makings of a really lovely family home that them and their growing family can move into. But if they don't get the money from the bank, this house could stay pretty much as you see it now. In Little Addington, Joe and Sarah are now six months in, at the most critical stage of their bungalow's transformation into a super modern home. It's all hands on deck, or at least it should be. But neither of the couple are anywhere to be seen. Joe has been called away with work, and Sarah's got her hands full. She got chicken pox from her big brother. Aren't you? Talk about bad timing. So it's left to Joe's dad, Andy, to keep an eye on the work. My role here is to act as Joe and Sarah's eyes and ears and to be on site, see what's going on, keep them updated. Yeah, no, he's all right. He's, sometimes feels some eyes boring into the back here, but he's fine there. He's... The time has finally come to begin installing all the glazing, including a key feature the external stairwell made of glass. Definitely this part of the project I think is make or break for the design. This is gonna be entirely made of glass and apart from the actual spire on the church just next door, this is one of the highest areas of the village and most of the village can see what's going on here. So this entire design is absolutely crucial to get right. I think it will be one of the defining features of this development you're probably not going to find another one. Certainly not in this village, maybe not in Northamptonshire. It's structural glass. It needs to be accurate to within a couple of mil. So if it's delivered wrong, it won't fit. In the last 50 years, glass production has come on so far that it's now not just something you look through, but something you can build out of. With costs coming down, what was once a material mainly used in corporate buildings is now an affordable option for residential projects. Glass can be used to look from inside to outside, but you can layer glass as well internally to look from room to room. Triple and even quadruple glazing are increasingly popular, energy-efficient alternatives to double glazing. Self-cleaning glass means you need a lot less elbow grease to keep things crystal clear. And high-tech privacy glass goes from transparent to opaque at the flick of a switch. However you use it, one thing's for certain. Building with glass gives any design instant wow factor. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. Paul and Andrea's the day of reckoning is finally upon them. The mortgage values are coming out um, to value the property um, to see hopefully whether there's enough equity uh, added on with the structural improvement that we've made to release the loan that we wanted to get the works finished off. I'm quite nervous but um, fingers crossed. The future of their home is now in the hands of the surveyor. But this couple still have faith their dream. You don't get nowhere by thinking nothing's going to ever materialise. Yeah. You've got to, you know, have the vision and then try and make it work and keep moving forward. Otherwise you're just going to be sitting in a small kitchen thinking, <laughs> thinking, well, this is what we've got and this is what we'll live with. It's been eight stressful months for carpet cleaning boss turned project manager Paul and his wife Andrea. This couple was determined not to settle for their lot and they took the ultimate gamble in turning their home 
and Paul's office into a building site. With a dream of upsizing in their beloved neighborhood to make room for their growing family. Paul and Andrea started their build without enough cash to finish it. Just as the shell got up, they ran out of money. But they did manage to refinance, but I'm just hoping that that was enough. Before, their home was pretty. Unfortunately, it was also pretty small. But now, although it's not finished inside, it has the potential to be the smartest kit on the block. And they've put their corner plot and limited funds to great use, building a beautiful extension that reflects the property's period character. Now, the front of the house doesn't actually look that different because most of the building works on the back. However, this new drive doesn't look fabulous. Inside, the kitchen was small and impractical, and the family struggled to live and work in the cramped conditions. Now they have a wonderful new space for their dream kitchen diner. What a fantastic view to the garden. I mean, I know the kitchen isn't in yet, but the, the room is very much in place, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So is this now what you wanted, what you imagined? Uh, you want bigger, don't you? you no, want I'm it feels really big now that it's done and it's plastered and it's an actual room. It's helped by the really big opening than the fact that the really big opening doesn't look out over a building site but looks out over a perfect yeah. lawn. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of quite appealing, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> when the room is finished, it will have a chic, contemporary look with retro touches and innovative ambient lighting. The fully integrated cabinets will have a smooth matte finish with ample work surfaces, including a large central island. And everything will be tied together with a monochrome colour palette. Bifold doors will lead out to the vast back garden, where Paul's invested in a new redwood clad garden office for his carpet cleaning business. God, this is so lovely. Coming out here will help me be more organised and get into the mindset of working in, in a bit of peace and quiet and be a bit more professional answering the phone, etc. So, yeah, for me, it's going to be a big bonus. But because you've got this gorgeous office, yeah. not only have you got a brilliant space, but you've freed up, you've freed up another room, so you've got exactly. a fourth bedroom. Yeah. 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 yeah, which is brilliant. Which is yeah. perfect. Is that for more babies? Yes. Possibly. Or a dressing yeah. room. I don't mind either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paul and Andrea's newly extended house is a tasteful addition to the pretty Bourneville estate. Despite all the financial uncertainty, this couple pushed forward with optimism and they're well on their way to completing the build. But was it worth such pressure? I mean, the budget was really tight on this and actually you know, quite bravely started the project without enough money to finish it. Yeah. So did you ever think maybe you'd just have to... Live at your dad's? <laughs> Forever. Yeah, and um, save up the money, which would have been a nightmare. It was quite a gamble, but mm. it was a gamble that paid off, yeah. wasn't it? When you started, the house was worth about 225000 wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. How much will you have spent when you get to the end? I think in total, 60000 there or thereabouts. And to be honest, I think you've got a lot of bang for your buck, I think. To have done mm. all of this for £60,000 is pretty impressive, mm, yeah. actually. Yeah. Their dream house was worth £475,000. They would have needed 250000 to buy it. But when completed, they'll have created their ideal family home for around 60 grand. That's an enormous £190,000 less than the cost of their dream home. But have they made a profit too? I think it would be quite reasonable now to value this at near the 350 level. So actually, you've created about £65,000 of equity in the house. No, good, good news. That's brilliant. Is this going to be forever, this house, do you think? I think so. I can't see myself <laughs> taking on another project in the near future. No, it is, um, and it always yeah. was. I think we always knew that this would be our forever home, and that's why we've kind of not kind of scrimped on things that we're putting in it and yeah. spent the time on it and invested so much time and money into it. Yeah, this is it. 
We'll put our feet up now. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul and Andrea's tremendous gamble has paid off and they are on track to have that spacious family home when baby number two arrives. But when Joe and Sarah's modern new extension is finished, I do wonder what the locals will say. This house was always going to divide opinion, but now it's certainly completely unrecognisable from what it once was. In Northamptonshire, Joe and Sarah's project has entered its eighth and final month. With the exterior transformation nearly complete, work on the interior is now in full swing. For well over half a year, Joe and Sarah have pursued their dream of transforming their dated property. Along the way, they've dealt with some serious problems. So we've had to kind of be very careful what we've dug out to keep the rest of the house from falling down. And have made some sensible compromises. This uses the space a lot better. There's a lot more things in it. And all under the watchful eyes of the neighbourhood. But finally, the build is nearly complete. This is probably the most radical new build to be allowed permission in this pretty village in the last decade. I just hope that what they've done has won approval from the locals. Their drab 60s bungalow was a bit of an eyesore. But now it's an eye-catching, ultra-modern home right in the heart of Little Addington. This house was always in such a dominant position in the village, right next to the church and, and right next to a public footpath where everybody walks past. It was always going to divide opinion. But now it's certainly completely unrecognisable from what it once was. To address the bungalow's awkward layout, the couple had planned to replace their kitchen on the ground floor. But instead, they've created this stunning open-plan kitchen diner on the lower ground floor with access to the great outdoors. So now you've got your kitchen living space down here overlooking the garden. Are you pleased with it now? Absolutely. We've actually got space and the children can still play down here while we're cooking. Yeah, you know, we're good. really pleased with it. Oh, good, good. Despite being so close to the graveyard, no dead bodies. Thankfully, nothing, no. Nothing found. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. <Yeah. laughs> Though, Joe, you did sacrifice this space because you wanted a big playroom down here for yourself, didn't you? <laughs> I, I did. If we done it as a toy room for me. It would have just been completely and utterly wasted. But I did manage to gain a, a space. And if you kind of go through the looking glass, you will... Oh, through uh, here? Through like here. Alice in Wonderland? Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness, this is amazing. So Joe was able to get his home cinema and games room after all. And it's chock-a-block with all the latest high-tech and surround sound. You don't often see a space that is actually so so fantastically indulgent in a way, <laughs> yep. but, but such fun. I think it's a good thing to have done. Eventually, when I'm allowed in, yep. I think it will be OK. <laughs> this floor is connected to the one above by this magnificent, uber-cool feature stairwell. Oh, so fantastic. All this glass. Isn't it wonderful? Which leads up to a space that can only be described as breathtaking. It's a sensational design triumph. Did you ever think that you would live in a home that looks like this? Never. It's individual, especially in the village. Around here you won't find anything hopefully like it. <laughs> it is fantastic. I've got to say, really gorgeous. So light, so bright. And this is really where a lot of your money was spent, wasn't it? On this kind of glass box at yeah. the back. Yeah. And, and the back of the house is just extraordinary. I mean, it's just beautiful. That's going to be lovely to live here. Mm. Yeah. We're going to enjoy it. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Sarah have shown real determination to create a standout piece of contemporary architecture. But at what cost? So now it's all finished. Tell me, was it worth it when you look at it now? Yes. I think the thing is that this is a completely unique house. I mean, it's yeah. really amazing. Mm. And it's a bit of a one-off. So when you started, this was worth £200,000. And 
You were going to spend £75,000 on the bill. What did you end up spending? Uh, about 110 Quite a bit more. Where did you get the extra money from? We managed to remortgage. And family. My dad, painting, decorating, doing all the things that clawed back the budget. With an £800,000 price tag, the couple's dream house was way beyond their reach. They would have needed 600000 to buy it. But despite going over budget, spending around one hundred and ten grand, they managed to create their ideal home for a whopping £490,000 less than the price of their dream house. But how much profit have they made? The good news is that I think if you did try and sell this, there's a really good chance that you should get about 475 for it. Wow. Really? Yeah. OK. <laughs> wow. So that would be £165,000 of equity you've created. That's even yeah, better than we ever, ever yeah, hoped for. Yeah, beyond what? Shocked. <laughs> yeah. Very shocked. Good shock. Really, you see Joe speechless. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> speechless. That is, that, is, that is very good. Joe and Sarah took a brave decision relocating to Joe's childhood village and taking on a challenging and potentially controversial build. The couple are clearly happy with how it's all turned out. And luckily, they're not the only ones. I think it fits in very nicely in the village. You know, it adds interest and uh, it's something different. I think it's quite an exciting space. The wood cladding looks very nice now it's finished. I envy the owner. <laughs>